Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is Fish Vlog number 192. And as it says in the thumbnail, I am getting ready, hopefully, to be able to give you a full uh, fish room tour for Fish Room Log 200. And one of the biggest hurdles for this is this back corner here. I don't do a whole lot of work back here. And these three aquariums, they're nice big aquariums. I mean, they're 20 gallons, each of them. And they've got so overgrown. This is a, a fern, and the other one, obviously, is Peace Lily. And, uh, well, it's been a few years. Uh, actually, I have to look back at my, uh, well, fish room vlogs for starters and see if, what, how long it's been exactly. But you can see it's overgrown. It's uh, grown into and around all the airline tubings. And it's got to the point now that it blocks out all the light into the aquariums. And that's obviously not good. And also, as you can see here, and as I pull it out, now this is a fern. What it usually does is send rhizomes along the surface of whatever soil or material it's on. And that's, you know, a few roots. But as you can see, it is adapted to the environment. It has sent down masses of roots into the aquarium, which has, well, basically plugged up the whole tank. And that is one of the things that I really don't like about immersed plants. They tend to send down so many roots. Any of you who have ever kept... Uh, pothos or anything along those lines in your aquariums or even uh, peace lilies they just tend to send out so much in the way of root mass that it interferes with the ability for the fish to uh, get around and do the things that they want to do and on my particular case it also gets to the point where i don't even bother trying to record these two these sorry these three aquariums anymore because well first off they're so dark from all the shading they get and secondly uh it's just too much of an effort trying to uh, get in there and get around all the plants. So that is all the roots and also you see there's an awful lot of java fern in there which is uh, good because this particular tank uh, is the third one along and it had just enough light that I was getting that the java fern uh, survived. But as you're going to see here in a little bit uh, the other two tanks weren't as lucky. Now this is as I said a peace lily Actually, that's not true. It was a peace lily. Uh, now it is divided and subdivided so many times. I didn't count them, but there has to be close to eight peace lilies in here, and I am not sure what I'm going to do with all of that. Uh, it's way more than I need, and I will probably I'll probably keep one or two of them. Uh, but I already have three peace lilies in the fish room, and they're doing really quite well. Uh, so I'm not sure. Do I need more? I don't know. The thing is massive, so I have to figure out what I'm going to do with that. So this is what's left. These are high humidity planters in theory, but they were so uh, shaded, like basically blocked out enough that they were dark, that the java fern wouldn't grow in them, and that requires very little, if any, light really. And yeah, they are at a point now where they just need to be stripped out completely and cleaned and reset. And actually, the, both those tanks are going to get that uh, that treatment. So I'm going to pull these off. Uh, fortunately, it's very easy to clean these. Just pull that out like that, set it aside, and then reach in and grab the actual tray, the, the bottom part of the high humidity planter, and lift it up over the pipe that's there. And then that just needs to be taken to the sink, thoroughly rinsed out, pull out any, uh, well, bits and pieces of plant, and of course get rid of all the moments in there, and clean them up a little bit. And that is, well, <laughs> so that's all there is to it. But uh, cleaning these two tanks, and actually doing a little bit of cleaning on the third tank, and a little bit of other work in the fish room, uh, basically took about two hours. So saying that's all is uh, probably a little bit of an understatement but uh, it's it wasn't really that difficult i was doing more than i need to normally for this but again it's been years that these have never been cleaned so uh, it's not exactly if you you know time it out for the entire time of its life uh much of an effort at all really so what i'm gonna do here is uh, now that i have the actual filters uh the high humidity plant parts the underground filters and all the piping and everything out I'm just going to go around and suck out some of the mulm in the bottom of both those tanks because uh, I want to also do a very big water change in this. You can see the second tank uh, at the far right there, well, far as away from the screen, uh, have uh, reduced the water quite a bit. I'm going to do the same for the other one as well. And now I have rinsed this out. It takes zero effort really. And then I'm going to put it back in the tank. 
And what I'm going to do is hook this all back up, get some Java fern into the trays again. I'm going to let them percolate for a couple of days. And then what I'm going to do is uh, start introducing life again into the tanks. Uh, there are shrimp in the one I'm currently in anyway. So I probably don't really need to do too much to that one at all. But the one on the far right, the far end one, uh, there was uh, very little in the usual microcosm life that I usually like to keep my tanks. I didn't really notice much in the way of scuds. I didn't really notice much in the way of shrimp. Uh, I suspect they uh, didn't in, like entirely like the environment because that was an awful lot of plant material. And plants uh, do alter their environment quite a bit, uh, as you already know. And uh, anyway, the shrimp didn't care for it, and I guess the scuds did not as well. And I didn't really find much, so I have to really decide uh, what I'm going to reintroduce into all this. Uh, my usual is scuds... Uh, cherry shrimp well they were originally cherry shrimp uh currently they're just shrimp and uh let that all percolate put some plants in there of course and then introduce some fish the neat thing about this is like i said these have been running for a few years and they were when i finished wiping them down you can hardly tell that they're actually not you know brand new which is a really a good statement towards the acrylic that i got it is uh, a little bit harder than what you get from like Home Depot and that sort of stuff. Uh, and it is quite resilient. I mean, I was using the top parts of these high humidity planters to rinse the gravel out in. I was I turned them upside down, filled them with the water, dumped all the gravel in it. And I was using that, uh, like I said, to do the rinsing for this. And well, if that were you know your standard plexiglass, it would end up being all scratched. And uh, this actually fared really quite well. And that's actually, like I said, very impressive. So that one is now done. And I'll do the other one off camera. And I'm going to show you what they look like in the end. Nice and clean again, which is nice. And there you go. These are all set. Uh, they need to run for a couple of days before I start throwing things in there. Because, well, I mean, I stripped them down completely to the 50% water change on both tanks. And it's going to take time before all well, the water settles down as well. Uh, I will do an update on this next week for you. Uh, as you can see, they're uh, fairly cloudy, but there will be life in them next week. And like I said, needs to be done because I've been neglecting this part of the fish room for so long. Actually, I really like it now that the light's in there and uh, looks a little bit more like it should. Anyway, thanks for watching. Leave comments. Let me know what you think about this. And I'll see you in the next video. And bye for now.